to one place. Suddenly there came sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. There were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Notice what the Bible is informing us. If you've got Jews and other devout men out of every nation under heaven, all of them ain't speaking the same language. No, sir. How is God going to relate his word? Mm -hmm. These other folk don't speak the same language as the people in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. How is God going to get these folk from these other nations to understand what it is? He wants them to know. He's going to give his apostles the power mm -hmm. to speak a language that they have not learned so that the man who ain't from Jerusalem can hear in Jerusalem in his tongue what he needs to hear so that when the message is over he can say men and brethren what shall we do? That was the purpose of the tongues on this occasion. The Bible sets the scene for us. There were at Jerusalem Jews and devout men out of every nation under heaven. When this was noise abroad, multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Y'all hear that? Every man didn't hear them babbling. Every man didn't hear them speaking no gibberish that nobody could understand. When you look at speaking in tongues in the Bible, the Bible shows us that the man speaking in tongues, the reason why it's called in 1 Corinthians 14, an unknown tongue, because it's unknown to the speaker, but it's not unknown to the hearer. The Bible tells us that they were confounded. Oh, it just blew their minds that here they were in Jerusalem, and somebody in Jerusalem was speaking the language of the Mesopotamian man. Somebody in Jerusalem was speaking the language of the man from Cappadocia. Somebody in Jerusalem was speaking the tongue that they spoke in Egypt. Of course, they were confounded. They weren't expecting to see that, but that was God's way of telling them what they needed to know. Right through these tongues. Y'all right. see this? Yes, it's a language. Yeah, yeah. Right. It ain't something that I do to show you I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. You want to show folk that you feel with the Holy Ghost? Live like it. Right. Live like it. Right. We have the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit are characteristics of folk who live like they got the Holy Ghost in them. That's how I know. Amen. That's how we can tell. Amen. It ain't by what you got coming out your mouth. Right. It's by the action. Yeah. It's by how you live your life. True, That's a true mark and character mm -hmm. of a person who's full of the Holy Spirit. Watch how he talked to folk on Monday uh -huh. and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. What he doing on Friday? Amen. Who he hanging out with on Saturday? Hello up in here. You want to know whether or not an individual is full of the Holy Spirit? See if they got the fruit abiding on their tree limbs. That's the way you can take it. The Bible says in verse number seven, they were all amazed and they marveled, saying to one another, and they discussed this among themselves. They weren't expecting this. When they got it, they said, what is this? Did you hear what he said? Mm -hmm. And in our language, yes it is. How? Mm -hmm. Are not, look at what it says. Are not all these 
Jesus would speak Galileans? Mm -hmm. Ain't these boys from around here? They not from where we're from. How is it then? Verse 8. Here we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse 11. Cretes and Arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Yes. They're literally saying I can hear him in my language talking to me about God. Yeah. If he was speaking some unknown language, those men wouldn't have been able to tell right. what they were talking about. Y'all right. right. see it? Yes. Tongues are language. Mm -hmm. It is not some mysterious sign that you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 14, as I prepare to take my seat. Again, in verse number six. Now, brother, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you? Hello? Mm -hmm. Except I speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine. Even things without life give sight, given sign, whether pipe or heart, except they give a distinction in the sound. Yes, sir. How shall it be known what is pipe or heart? Exactly. You ain't never played no piano. You sit there in front of that piano and just go to tapping on keys. That ain't gonna make no sense to me. When I'm used to listening to Mozart and Beethoven. All right, Master. I may not know what it is you're playing, yeah. but I know what it ain't. <laughs> Amen. Up in hell. Paul is saying, if I come and speak unto you in a language that you don't understand, what good is it? That's all we're asking. In a sinless way, you claim to speak in tongues. The purpose of the tongue was to edify somebody in the church. If they can't understand what you're saying, what good is it? What good? What good? You ain't supposed to be using no ability to just show off mm -hmm. what God has given you. Right. That's the reason Paul had to correct even the Corinthians' misuse of it. He's showing them that tongues have a specific purpose in the church. Verse 8, if a trumpet, give an uncertain sign, mm. who shall prepare himself for that? If I'm getting ready to go to war, and I know I got a fella holding a trumpet, it's supposed to let me know when to fall in, right. he better know the tune. Yes, sir. Amen. Up in here. He can't go to play and Mary had a little lamb, and I'm supposed to know <laughs> when it's time to fall in. If he gonna let me know it's time for battle, yes, he got to say something with that trumpet that I can understand. Yes. So I know it's time for me to mount up. Y'all yes. yes. see this? Paul is using these examples to show that it is better to speak a language that folk know so that they can be edified. Mm -hmm. Y'all see it? Yes. Oh, I wish I had time. Oh, I wish I had time, but you can read the rest of that. Drop down the verse, number 18, Paul says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than y'all, yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice, I might teach others also, that 10,000 words yes, sir. in an unknown tongue. Right. I'd rather for you to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. Yes, sir. At the extending of the invitation, you can make a conscious decision to make Jesus your choice because you understood the message of the message. Amen. That's what Paul is saying. Paul Amen. said, brethren, in, in children, in children, don't be children in understanding that. When, when it comes to matters, when it comes to y'all fighting and carrying on, that's when you need to be children. Yeah. Cause children don't hold no brother, no brother. Yes, Wrong for the holding all the way to the graveyard. Yes. In knowledge, be children.